Who are you? Bright eyes, I think. Are you sure? I don't know. What are you doing here? Uh, hanging out in your shed. What am I doing here? Watching you mill stuff. So we've done this milling thing before. Uh, but this time we'll anodize the milling as well. Yeah, so let's get started. It is actually the fucking morning later and it's still going. Uh, I used the 2mm bit. I definitely should have used the 4 or 6 because this is taking ages. Looks cool though. Alright, so um, the whole idea of, the, of this video is to show you the anodization process. So we kind of skip through all the milling. Uh, I'm going to get off the aluminum part, rinse it off, make sure it's squeaky clean, degrease it, and then we're going to start the anodization process. We should... We're figuring out how to anodize. We should know this hand already, but... No. <laughs> okay, this stuff is pretty intense. It's an understatement. Uh, oh. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna stay. We should we should have had gas masks. <coughs> Are you just gonna eyeball it? It doesn't really matter too much. Well we have the pH meter. Oh, oh, okay. Actually I'll put the camera on that. So we're striving for a pH of about four. That well, it hasn't mixed because you're now yeah. on one spot. Oh god, you can see the fumes from the formic acid. <laughs> it's now pH 1.9. That's probably a little. <laughs> <laughs> you want to like mix it? Uh, it well, we'll just try this. It hasn't changed. <laughs> That's strong acids for you. Yeah, but like. It's, it's essentially a buffer now. But it's it didn't. It's two. Ah. Oh, oh, 2.0. <laughs> Excellent. Gonna. 0.1. Do you want to start again? No. Hey. No, we're just gonna we're just gonna try anodizing. So it doesn't the, really matter that much. Let's, it is, let's <laughs> just say to ourselves. Is it a logarithmic it, scale? Or yeah, is it, it is. Yeah, okay, well then it matters a lot. We're, we're gonna need like a hundred liters of water to make this pH four again. So you know, I think we might want to start again. No, it's fine. It's fine. All all it needs to be is like an acid solution that conducts electricity. Oh, that's all gonna be fine. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So the manual called for anodizing at 120 amps per square meter for 30 to 45 minutes which so is divide that by like 30 it's pretty much three amps for this piece which yeah. is exactly the maximum current of this parcel it's, it's like three and a half amps yep so we're gonna do that i'm just gonna max it out we're witnessing a phenomenon here where there is uh let me get a pointer this is a stainless steel spoke that I'm using to keep the plate off the bottom of the tank and obviously it's oxidizing and there is like pink oxidization coming off of it and being drawn towards the cathode which we don't really know why this happens we think it's positively charged because it's coming from the positively yeah. charged aluminium plate yeah so it's, it's uh, yeah so it's positively charged ions of some kind of iron solution or iron chrome um, compound I guess that's probably being plated onto the aluminum cathode so 
I'm interested to see if that actually gets some discoloration. I should also note anyone trying to reproduce my results, uh, this is probably going to be a very unequally anodized piece of aluminum, so uh, don't. <laughs> this is a learning process. It's interesting to see that now after a while you can see some pitting going on. So these are little pits that are being formed by the anodization process. Uh, I'm not 100% sure what the cause is of pitting, but it's happening. Okay, this has been sitting for half an hour. I am of the conviction that we're done. <laughs> for no particular scientific <laughs> reason. Been half an hour, sounds fine. Um, we're going to dispose of this um, formic acid by neutralizing it with sodium hydroxide, making sure that pH is around 7 ish. And then essentially it's just uh, water. Alright, so now we're going to see how much sodium hydroxide we need to <laughs> so add. I pull it again. Uh, well, <laughs> this, light loss. <laughs> this can be exothermic. Yeah, no, let's uh... let's do it the scientific way. So, <laughs> just just for reference, the solution is now at 1.5 pH. <laughs> Jeez. Um, I don't necessarily need. Do a funnel. Well, should be fine. Should be right. Now this can bubble. Okay, it doesn't. Good. You can just add this and stir it. Yeah, it is bubbling. See? It's a fairly slow process. We can just speed it, speed it along. This will um, neutralize whatever ions are in the solution. It's already at 1.8, 2. Yeah, we're gonna need a lot more. Oh, it's <laughs> and back to 1.9. So the cool <laughs> thing here is that you can see the solution has gone all red and it's now at pH 11.9. <laughs> so we need to put acid in. All the, all the uh, iron uh, has precipitated out as iron oxide because it was dissolved before. And we kind of overshot with the sodium hydroxide. And unfortunately, because it's a strong acid, we cannot easily dilute it. So we have to use more acid. Just put a little bit in. Not like last time. All right, so now we're aiming for a solution at 60 degrees. pH four, it's 8.2 right now. I'm going to try to make it pH four using both the formic acid which we have now learned not to add in too much. Wow. Well, there we go. It's at one again. <laughs> <laughs> this will fix it, all right? I don't actually trust you. I'm sure it's fine. I mean, it's just formic acid, one of the... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, a little bit, d -marks. Just like that. Last time we went from 2 to 2.6 already. It's only going to go faster. This pH is logarithmic. Add hot water. Do you want to go here? Okay, that's a problem. Actually, yeah, that's a problem because that's quite acidic. I think something inside the pH meter is Just reacting. Just <laughs> Just had a big meltdown. All right, so now we're adding the dye stuff and we shouldn't have to add that much. Like a couple of... Oh, that, that's beautiful. That's actually... Do that again, that would really... Be, huh. Kind of explodes in the water into a stream of color. That should actually be enough. Yeah. And then we can throw in the part pretty much immediately. Now, according to the instructions, we don't need to add any current to it, it'll just do it. It'll just work. <sighs> Say that again. It's so fucking cold. <laughs> it's not Australia. I hate your country. 
What do you think uh, our result is going to be? <laughs> it's not going to work. We had a small failure already because the temperature kind of stopped being cold. Oh, and I dropped this in the acid, so it broke, which was my fault. But we did it again, and hopefully the dye didn't evaporate, and hopefully we have a black piece of aluminium. And it's still aluminum colored. <laughs> Well, well, it's, it's dark. <laughs> it's got slightly dark. It's like off colored. <laughs> uh, what have we done? It's meant to be like a beautiful aluminium that's black and. Oh, uh, it's it's been slightly. That's no. That's slightly. That's dark. an utter failure in every possible sense. That's not a huge success. It is darker though. It is slightly darker. So we sort of did it. But I, um, I don't think it has actually been properly That's so ugly. So what we do? <laughs> well, it, we're gonna rinse it off and see what. Uh, nah, no, we'll just leave it. As we'll leave it. it we'll leave it. I mean, this was our first time. <laughs> it's always tough the first time. All right. So a post mortem of what happened. Uh, a couple of things. So first of all, we have quite extensive pitting here. Uh, these are pits that, as far as I can tell, this has to do with either not properly cleaning or uh, with just using the wrong type of aluminum. And that ha has caused these like significant pits, like they're like half a millimeter deep uh, and a good millimeter in diameter. Pretty deep. Um, that's a big hazard. Uh, this very uneven discoloration is definitely caused by the uh, anodization process and just uneven like bubbles forming and just st staying underwater because what we can see is on the other side this is actually very clean and this seems to have been anodized sort of correctly although not long enough but this side has had bubbles that just stayed under there for way too long so uh, I definitely should have stirred the whole mixture and probably uh, suspended the um, aluminum a bit further up in the solution. And then lastly, uh, the color didn't actually get in and that's probably due to the anodization being way too shallow. Uh, although I do fear that if I would have gone on for longer uh, the pits would have grown into actual holes so <laughs> let's just not try doing that for longer so yeah I'm uh, I'm going to experiment much more but uh, hope you liked this very first time trying to anodize a piece of aluminum which has miserably failed <laughs> <laughs>